What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to GMI's World Podcast. And today we're going to be talking Week 7, NFL 2020, Thursday Night Football, Giants and the Eagles. Now, I'm going to tell you this right now. I know it all comes down to Evan Ingram's drop, and he just destroyed the hearts of all the Giant fans out there. But let's just be honest about this. You guys are used to it. Since Eli won those miraculous Super Bowls, you guys have known that the Giants have not been anything that you would want them to be. They're not as bad as the Jets, but they're getting there. But let me just go ahead and I'm going to break the game down um, thoroughly based on the things that I've seen. And I want to see if you guys agree with some of the stuff that I took away from the game. So I'm going to bring up some of the numbers and kind of explain a few things to you guys as we go along. And one of the biggest things that I want to talk about is the fact that a lot of you guys including myself sometimes, we're very, very hard on Daniel Jones, all right? But when it comes down to it and you put yourself in a position to win the game and a dependent position like a tight end, a wide receiver, a running back drops a pass, that is like a kick in the face, dude. Like that is just like the worst thing ever. Um, You know, I really, really, like it hurt to see it. Like I don't care about the Giants or whatever, but it hurt to see it because it really, like just because Evan Ingram had butterfingers and he had popcorn or extra uh, butter, right before the game and he drops that pass it also weighs on him emotionally if he wants to win like and i say if because i don't know what these guys want to do nowadays uh a lot of them just want to be on social media and just do whatever and just make as money make as much money marketing as possible they don't have the most of these people don't have the urge to want to win the right way the way that it used to be so i don't really know what his intent is but if he wanted to win it also weighs heavily on him But we're going to break down the Giants' stat line a little bit later. We're going to start off with the Eagles, who are not that good. But now, uh, you know, they're they're tied or right there with the Cowboys with a disgusting record because the NFC East sucks. So let's take a look at Carson Wentz, right? Who, in fact, was able to finally take advantage a little bit of man coverage uh, throughout the game. I don't know if you guys have been picking up on it, but he's been very, very, um, you know, pedestrian when people have manned up uh, his receivers uh, based on the statistics that I've seen. Um, He's not really good at reading the coverages, but he was pretty decent yesterday and the Giants played pretty well uh, You know considering the fact that they suck at football. So let's go ahead and take a look at some of the things because Realistically the Giants should have won this game by a lot more than whatever you know Whatever it would have been if if, uh, Evan Evan Ingram catches that ball, but Carson Wentz throws for 359 yards two touchdowns one interception, right? the rushing the, the leading rusher had 46 yards right Carson Wentz also rushed for a touchdown this game turned into something to where Carson Wentz pretty much put everything he put all of everything with this game on his back in my opinion and you know he put his team in a position to win and they could have lost it based on their defense just to kind of point that out because I'm also very critical of Carson Wentz in certain cases I don't think he's been the same since he's come back from that knee injury so I really watch him to kind of see what he's doing but he gave his heart and his soul in this game. And he deserves credit for that. You know what I'm saying? Like you can't, this is the one thing, I'm gonna always be objective. Even if I like a team more than another team, it doesn't really matter. I'm gonna give you objectiveness, right? I believe that Carson Wentz played, like he gave everything. Now, the problem is you're giving everything to a team that sucks. So the Giants should have been an easier walk around. Like them dudes is garbage. So I don't know if you need to do all of that, but I love the tenacity that I saw from him. And he never stared away from anything that was going on. Like he stood in the pocket, he took hits. He was he was ready to go. He did not, he realized just like all of us that are listening and watching this podcast, that the Giants are a terrible football team and he has to do everything in his power not to lose to them. That's what I saw from him. So I love that sense of urgency. I just wanna make sure that you Eagle fans understand. I, look, I could care less about what goes on, uh, you know, as far as the Eagles go, but I have to give credit where it's due. This man rushing touchdown and two passing touchdowns Like, he made this game what it was. He willed the Eagles to win, all right? So I give you all of that because now we're going to go to the flip side, and then we're going to talk about the Giants and Daniel Jones. And, you know, he's been getting a lot of flack since he got picked in the first round early, and nobody knew what was going on. He went from Danny Dimes to Danny Pennies. It's a lot of stuff going on, but we're going to go ahead and objectively talk about this. So let's look at his stat line. 20 of 30, pedestrian, 187 yards, pedestrian, two touchdowns, one interception, right? Rushing. Four carries for 92 yards. So if you're going to give credit to, uh, you know, Carson Wentz, you have to give credit to Daniel Jones. He's not Michael Vick. He's not Lamar Jackson. He's not Russell Wilson. And he's rushing for 92 yards. 
okay? So let's just understand that this man was putting everything out there on the field. And then when you look at his running backs, they all suck, including Devonta Freeman, who is terrible at football, but that's a different story. We're gonna go ahead, let's take a look at Evan Ingram. He had nine targets, six receptions, right? Now look, if you look at his interceptions and the targets throughout the season, all, most of the drops that he's had has been to Evan Ingram and the interceptions. All right, that's next level gen stats, right? So you look at the fact that Golden Tate was able to get a touchdown, Sterling Shop was able to get a touchdown, Wayne Galman uh, got a rushing touchdown, right? So it, it was pretty much spaced out um, enough for people to go up and, and contribute to get the win. So you can see the same thing that I'm trying to portray to you guys. Daniel Jones, again, he knows that the Giants suck. And he also gave everything but it wasn't enough because he just didn't have a, a a tight end that could, you know, that cared enough about the game to catch the ball. Pretty much the dude, listen, they said, look, don't have Butterfingers before the game. You know what I'm saying? Like the actual candy, like don't, I know it's Halloween and you like Butterfingers, don't eat any before the game, Evan Ingram. He said, all right, cool. And then he ate it anyway. And then it just slipped right off his fingers. So you see a tale of two stories with one, it only can be one winner. So now we evaluate everything and it's gonna be a lot of, oh, you know, he could have done this, he could have done that. No, this loss is not on Daniel Jones. And I know it's unfair because it's an entire, it's 60 minutes in the game, but this loss is entirely on Evan Ingram. And, and I, I will be willing to debate with anybody because look, regardless of how the game goes around, these critical plays, it, it, it's what makes and breaks players. That's what it does. It makes, and that, this is where legends are born. You catch that pass, even though the Giants suck, they're looking different in the division. You know, like everything changes. So in my opinion, this, this, this was a game that the Eagles should have actually taken this loss. Evan Ingram is wide open. He stretches it out. I don't want to hear that the ball is overthrown. Evan Ingram is all of 6'3". He has a decent wingspan. Put your arms out there if you and, and you didn't need to die for it so i don't want to hear about all that he could have you know it was right there on his fingertips catch the ball that's it you got to secure that you got to get that win for your team and that is it there is nothing else that needs to be said about this um other than the fact that daniel jones played his heart out and like i said i know his numbers and the stat line passing wise was pedestrian check out that rushing that rushing is huge that's something that you guys have to pay attention to that is a very important stat to look at and understand um you know that he tried everything pretty much and it just didn't work out for him because of one play so that's where we are with that that's pretty much you know what what happened week seven thursday night football and we have to wait to see how they actually rebound from this because like i said we have to see if evan ingram is going to put some sticky stuff on like you know jerry rice used to do or do something along those lines because this was absolutely ridiculous and it has to get fixed i want to thank you guys and girls and girls for watching i'm going to see you guys and girls next time one love y'all